let me explain a little bit about this chart, which may have so many things on it that appears a bit confusing. Light is actually electromagnetic energy. This energy acts either as particles or waves. It's one of the mysteries of science how light can do this. Physicists use the word light to describe all sorts of energy coming from the sun. The sun, of course, generates this with a huge ongoing fusion reaction in which hydrogen is turned into helium. And the small amount of mass that's converted directly to energy is what reaches us at the Earth. However, of all the energy reaching us, only a small part is visible to our eyes. Our eyes are really detectors for a certain type of energy coming from the sun. We can recreate some of this type of energy it's in the form of radio waves. If we generate electrical signals that vary at a certain frequency, that is, they reach a peak and then return to zero and reach a peak in the other direction, as if we were plotting them on a chart that represented strength versus time, time on the horizontal axis, we would see a wave type of a diagram. And you can think about these waves traveling through space in the same way that waves reach us in the ocean. Now, radio waves, we can't detect. We need special equipment for that. Waves of this frequency, all the way here from essentially not varying at all, to perhaps 100,000 cycles per second, to maybe a couple of million cycles per second, and here 100 million cycles per second. We're still talking about the kind of waves that we use to transmit radio, FM, television, a little higher, we get to the frequencies that are used for cell phones and other small devices, and also the microwave tubes uh, that heat food in uh, microwave ovens produce a signal that happens to resonate with water molecules, and that's why it can transfer energy to those molecules and make them vibrate and make them hotter. But if we increase the frequency of this energy, the energy becomes infrared radiation and it produces heat, the sensation of heat, if we increase the frequency even further, we get to this very unique bunch of frequencies here, which are very, very high. You can see this many variations per second as compared to what comes out of the power line, 60 cycles per second, or in some parts of Europe and the UK, 50 cycles per second. This is varying tremendously fast, and it turns out that these frequencies here of light cause sensations in our eyes. And when the signals of those sensations are sent to the brain, we detect this range of color. It's a very narrow range of frequencies of energy emanating from the sun that does this for us, but it's these frequencies that illuminate our world. And the reason this is relevant to our studies is we use substances of these various colors we want to find out how they produce these colors or why they have these colors. And we want to understand what artists have done with them. We want to understand how different substances have been used over the years to produce these kinds of colors in artworks of various kinds. Frequencies above this, ultraviolet, X-rays, and even gamma rays, these can all cause harm to the human body in one way or another. Typically, by damaging the structure of the nucleus and DNA in cells, exposure to these types of rays, these and their interaction with DNA, they tend to damage it or destroy it. Since DNA is the roadmap by which cells construct new cells, damaged DNA means a damaged pattern and damaged construction of new cells, which results in cancerous cells. That's why exposure to energies in this range beyond a certain level is very dangerous. The main thing to remember from this is that the energy put out by the sun contains all of these different types of things. Some of them reach the earth. These happen to reach the earth. Others are blocked by our atmosphere. Others penetrate the atmosphere. Our eyes are sensitive only to this range, and it's that range that we're going to consider in this course.